as an esthete, uh, an appreciator of beauty, but also as a would-be moralist, um, you uh, you sometimes have a, a clashing of sensibilities. And this is part of what uh, Kierkegaard wrote about in his book, Either Or. Um, it's hard not to appreciate beauty. Um, and I think that all of the the uh, great artists of... Uh, and, and you don't even have to be a great artist, or you can be a mediocre artist or not an artist at all, but still there's something in the human uh, spirit that is uplifted by beauty, whether it's the beauty of, of uh, architecture or the beauty of, of um, a person. And um, um, around this time, 2013, I had another muse, uh, an actual person who was a muse, at this time uh, a different person than, than the, the muse who informed the doctor and the heretic. Um, a very beautiful uh, person, beautiful young person, not, not underage, but young, um, uh, significantly younger than myself. And, uh, and so again, it was more, you know, my, uh, I, I didn't uh, know this person at all. And of course it was, you know, infatuation more or less, um, more than anything else. But, but she uh, she became the muse for the composing of this uh, this work in particular, Beauty in the Least, which was a, a novella length um, work that I published in 2013, uh, and. Uh, the idea of the, the idea that occurred to me was, uh, or there were, there were two things that appealed to me, uh, was writing from the point of view of someone who is struggling with with beauty, you know, being an appreciator of it, being drawn to it, but at the same time being aware of the uh, uh, of how it can lead one astray, um, and also the the dangers of obsession. Obsession is a very, it's a very interesting topic. You know, people. I think, I think, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to make some very categorical statement here, uh, and I don't know if I should. I don't even know exactly how to phrase it, but I, it's something like unless you become obsessed with something or someone. Uh, as a writer, as an artist, you you really um, uh, you really don't have that much to draw on, right? Once you become obsessed, uh, then you maybe aren't in the best frame of mind in some ways because obsession is unhealthy. Obsession means that you think more about is the object of your obsession than you do about the things that uh, you know really matter in life, and the object of the the obsession becomes the uh, the only thing that matters as far as even if you know better, you know even if your your logical self knows better, you uh, you just get you just get pulled down into this vortex of obsession. I thought it would, I was very interested, and again, this is taking taking us into Dostoevskian territory, because I think Dostoevsky understood obsession um, very well, and it's part of what makes him so compelling as a writer, and uh, uh, so I wanted to write a, a story from the perspective of this, uh, this poor schlub, this sad sack, this kind of working man, uh, hates his job, uh, has a, has a family, uh, but, uh, you know, his, his, he, he feels that, uh, deep down his wife despises him, um, and, uh, and so forth, and then he sees the, uh, this, this young girl, uh, who becomes the object of 
his obsession and um, and eventually as with as with heart killer eventually he develops this mental capacity simply by willing it uh, he, he develops this capacity to uh, uh, to to leave his to, to have his astral body leave his physical body and uh, and his astral body dwells with uh, the object of his obsession and uh, and uh, you know grabs her interest and eventually seduces her and then she she in turn becomes obsessed uh, although she 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 knows not with what because she never sees this uh, this being that is uh, that is seducing her um, but she knows how it makes her feel and uh, and so and so for her she gets caught up in this vortex of obsession uh, with our <laughs> anti-hero I should always say and my characters are, are almost always anti-heroes and they're they're almost always not terribly admirable people um, some are worse than others I think this one this is one of the more benign of my uh, my anti-heroes actually the one in this story but um, so it uh, so they're so they get caught up in this uh, in this uh, tryst this kind of uh, ast where, where he's in his astral body uh, and she's in her regular body but she she comes to enjoy his attention and and uh, to uh, enjoy his min ministrations um, and uh, you know without actually knowing who he is and then uh, or you know the, it, the thing is that it could all be it could all be in his mind it could just be a dream uh, I, you know it's it's that possibility is left open he could just be having these these um, uh, vivid uh, uh, daydreams um, where uh, where he seduces her in this manner in this unusual manner uh, this older man <clears throat> uh, but uh, it all culminates in a, in a, uh, a shattering final scene where uh, he appears before her and she uh, she doesn't recognize him because uh, or she's somewhat appalled by who he really is what he really looks like uh, you know and uh, can't believe that it's actually actually him and uh, and so uh, this this arouses a rage in him um, and uh, and 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 violence ensues and then he wakes up and he thinks to himself you know, maybe it was all just a dream, but he has an ominous sensation that perhaps it wasn't. Perhaps it all actually, actually happened. Um, so this was a this was a, a more um, straightforward kind of story, not so convoluted uh, as Heart Killer, but it was again uh, more of a meditation on the the, the nature of of obsession um, and something that you know I, I I I spoke before about how you know you take the parts of yourself that are the most out there the most dangerous the most edgy uh, you know the least conformable to uh, uh, to the morality that you that you believe in or that you aspire to and uh, or, or a character like this who just gets lost, who just gets blinded to uh, what he's what he's doing, and just just goes deeper and deeper down this vortex, uh, drawn by her beauty, um, and then pulls her into a vortex where 
where she is likewise uh, obsessed, but but neither of for neither of them, uh, you know, neither of them are really obsessed necessarily with what's the most real about the other. Um, so we it ends with the possibility that uh, our our antihero could now be uh, a reprobate could 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 even possibly be a murderer or it could have just been just a dream but we don't know for sure again the ambiguous ending that some people some people hate some people just want to have it spelled out for them in black and white i think ambiguity can all, can often be very uh, uh, very interesting and very satisfying that's that's just my my feeling about it <clears throat> So that's uh, my 2013 uh, work entitled Beauty and the Least.